um, about three or four years ago, Roy Stark did a book, um, The Minerals of the, Eng of the English Midlands, um, using the literature and the, the minerals that have been collected by the professionals of, of the time. Um, this is um, my own personal take on, on the um, minerals of the Midlands. And we, we range from, um, where's Leicester? I can't see Leicester at the minute. It's somewhere around, there's Leicester under my cursor there. So there's an, a small area around Leicester. There's one location down near Nuneaton near Coventry. There's several in the area around Matlock, and Bakewell, and up above there in this little area around here. Um, and it goes across nearly as far as you talk to on this side. So it's, the area is roughly that bit in the middle. It's about uh, probably about 60 miles by 40 miles area. Um, I'm running. I'm running this from a. Um, I'm going to try and make this bigger if it'll go. That's better. I'm running this from a, 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 sl a slideshow rather than PowerPoint because PowerPoint on this computer is so slow, we, we may lose the, the photographs from time to time. So I'm starting off in um, a, a place called Exton Hill, which is just over the border from Derbyshire in Staffordshire. And it was one of the places we always went to as a start for a, either a day trip or a weekend trip or whenever we were in the area. So Exton Hill was um, um, was, was mined from um, the, the, the 1700s for, for copper and they, they produced this this shaft here is, is the top shaft called the um, with a with a a what an engine on an engine has built on by Bolton and Watt and it's called what the Watt shaft on the Exton Deep Pipe and these are, these are this is the first book I bought on the area which gave me the information about the place. This is roughly a sketch a hand drawn sketch so the the river runs down through there. And that, so that, there's the main, the main levels are there. You've got the Birch's level, the Clayton level, the Exxon Deep level, and then this is the, 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 the Dutchman level here. And that goes up to the very top of the hill. And you, you make your way up a path from uh, around the back here somewhere, follow this track up, get to the top of the hill, and there's this, the, the top of the shaft is this one here. So the first place I'm going to look at up here will be just over the... There's a little uh, a, a style, a fence in the, the, the in that area just there, which you go over, over to get to. And this is the, the top of the Exton Deep shaft. The Watts, Watts shaft and the top of Exton pipe. These, these were taken back in the year uh, 1977, I think this was, when my daughter was seven year old. And my dog was about just about a year old. Um, so these, these are all old slides and they've been been transferred through into to JPEG. Um, so this was the what we call it the Azurite dump. It was a small, very small area where they dumped material from this. It's just on the back of this, this shaft, but um, it produces some very nice Azurite. Move that away, but that's, that's it. Well, this is my friend Martin Gale and Richard Belson, who's not here tonight. And this is me um, after a tiring day on the on the dump. But this is basically you dig a small hole and then look at every bit of rock that comes out. And from there you get the beautiful azurite clusters. That these little these balls, I've got two or three of these little balls there. They're not very big, field of view eight millimeters. That one is a very small crystal, um, 0.75 millimeters. And there's another little cluster on, on malachite. Martin? Yeah. How do you find those little blue balls in all the dirt? Um, well, basically, you, you, you anything with any color on it, you put in a bag and bring home. And then once you start looking at it, you know that you know, you've got a rough idea there's something in there. It's it's one of those places where you start finding these the, the calcite, and you've got the ori calcite and the calcite and all the other bits and pieces. This is pyrite on this one little little crystals of pyrite. Um, but it, the, the whole area is just riddled with work. And that, that's an overview of the, of the area. Look, looking up 
So this, this is the, the, the track I stand was up behind this building here, up this hill, and you work up this hill to the very top. This is taken from the other side, looking back down. So there's the car park. And my, my, my journey up to this particular was up the side of this thing, over the top, and up across this dump, and up to the, the very top of the hill. But this was the, the, um, the, 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 the bottom, the, the Clayton Adder. There's another adder down on the side, and over this area, which goes straight in onto the vein further in. But this was the main, the main level in to the, to, to the Ecton deep, deep, deep shaft. Um, this woods down here, these are all very individual mines. This one down here, it's main, this, this is mainly um, charcoal pyrite in, in, in calcite with, um, in, and also pyrite growing in, in the, bit, the big lumps of rock. And they are, there's some big lumps come out of that one. Another, another big dump here with odds and ends on it. This was a, a, a very small level. They call it the creamery level but, or birches level. It was it was um, built as a trial. I never found much in it. I did find one calcite crystal um, about three or four meters in, and um, I had no on your, on your hand torch at this particular time. So I did get one piece from there. But this is my daughter in the end. And so, but they used this um, back in Victorian times as a um, to, to, to store cheese, and, and, and a, they called it a creamery level. It was a storage facility more than anything else. That's just looking down the other way. The this stump here is the um, the the slag, the Ecton Ecton slag dump, and I got one or two specimens from there. But there is another level that goes in, just a right, just down in this area here, straight into the hillside this way. I was there in three years ago. They were digging all this lot up, and then they were re um, restoring the the level. From here in, so I don't know what the situation is down there now. So I haven't been for about three years. This is the just a few of the bits from the Acton smelter. So you got possible Ossendiakite, Brockentite, um, Malachite, and Linerite. That's the four usual ones you get from these types of smelter, with, um, in, especially in the UK, and nothing very much rare material. So in fact, the whole thing with Derbyshire and all that area is that the the rarity, the rare minerals don't, don't occur. They're nearly all um, uh, calcite, pyrite, shulker pyrite, mainly gang minerals. And um, if you go round the back of Acton, there's another little set of work that's called water bank mine. And from there you get, again, oracalcite, rosacite, and possible ramsbeckite, which is, well, this, I think, this, this bit here. With the rosa site round it. Um, Steve Rust has certainly got Rams Beckite from this, this location. Um, this one I, I, is Smith, the, the brown Smithsonite on there. And this I I think could be Namuite. I don't know if I spelt it right. Though. And this is just a, a piece of calcite. So then we move from there to the area around Castleton, which is up near Sheffield. There's the village of Castleton. And there's, a, there's a, this cave there, there's a little place up here. And along this, this road here is a, the Speedwell Cavern, which is a, um, it goes into the Blue John Hill. This is all, all the, the hills around. And this is a, um, a boot level. So you go down about 150 steps. And there's an underground tour by boat. And that goes in under there and into the hill and then back out again. And, but you, if you, this road here used to be the old road around, um, up and across and down through here, because this is the Winnets Pass, which is a very steep hill. And the original cultures and the horses couldn't, couldn't get up it. So they put this track around to so they could get round and over to the other side and, and join up there. So they've got the Blue John Cavern up there and then the Tree Cliff Cavern. This is where the Blue John comes from. So the next picture should be, and this was taken in 2013. I took Manfred Seitz, which is that, that gentleman there from, he's from, um, from, the, from the Munich group. And uh, we had a walk, we, we drove up and then walked. This is the old road. 
And this hill at the back is called Mam Tor, um, otherwise known as the Shimmering Mountain, because all the it, it moves a lot, and all this the, the, there's all layers of, of, of sort of limestone formation. But the road, this is the, uh, the the road how it was in 2013, and you can see it's all cracked and falling away, and just desolation. There is another mine down there, the old Tor mine, which is down in the bottom. Just as we, uh, yeah, down, the, just down there somewhere, uh, the, you can't get in it. But this is the underground in in blue in the Blue John mine at Three Cliff. So you got the um, the, the stalactites and the blue, the veins of Blue John. It's just it, it, it's just for those who don't know, Blue John is just blue fluorite. But it's just from this particular place it forms like this. Again, these are, these are, these are the, the, the Blue John veins where they, they, they cut this out and make them into vases and ornaments and jewellery. That's one of my specimens that I actually bought that in, in the Blue John cavern um, in about 1977. Um, these are two, um, they call what they, what they call them, um, Tazza, Tazza's, the chats with Tazza. There, Blue John vase is made from solid lumps of Blue John sitting on Ashford black marble. Absolutely beautiful. They are they are quite tall. That's probably maybe eighteen inches in height. And that's a little bit smaller. This is a, a barite specimen which I was given this, but um, it came from um, Holland Twine Mine which is up on Dirtlow Rake, which is a, a, an area above Castleton, which is quite a high area with a, a load of mines um, and quarries are all over the place up there. And you can walk around and look, but there's, there's very little to find these days. It's all been worked out and dug over. That's a, um, a picture I took off the internet the other, when I was doing, preparing this talk. This is the, the main quarry now, just outside Castleton Village. And this is up on, and we actually went to, we, we walked, we, we drove in in here, parked there and walked up this track through this. And we came out to the top and looked over the edge of this quarry. We couldn't get in because this is work and they wouldn't let you come in. So we, then we walked to this part here, crossed over the road, and this is the beginning of Dirt Low Rake. This is a, a, an area that runs up all the way through and carries on straight up and up. And, up this way and carry on through through the the, the, the village up the, the countryside. Um, didn't find an awful lot, but this fluorite comes from um, the, the 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 cliff on this this particular part. Um, this is looking back down towards the the cement quarry. Um, we come up this track. These rocks all produce specimens of fluorite if you spend enough time digging in, but it's very, very worked over. And you can see we got some bits of calcite and bits of fluorite from this. Um, this is that, the bottom bit of Dirt Low Rake, and this is the top end of Dirt Low Rake. And you can, when you're walking down through this, you can actually see on the walls where the miners had, had hit the, 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 the Galena veins with their picks and um, to, to get the, get the, the lead out of, out of the rocks. But this goes up, this, this is nothing that's just totally overgrown now and it just carries on through um, and you can't find an awful lot in it at all. But fortunately, um, one, one of our friends who was with us this day went over the and looked over the, the, the end of the big quarry and he bent down and picked this bit of rock up that got this lovely fluorite inside it. And he gave me, he, he collects big crystals and he gave me the piece of rock myself to, to break up. So this is one of the pieces that come out of it. And these are two specimens from um, collected from Pindale Quarry several, year, several years ago, eight millimeter. And that one is um, one, uh, 2.5 millimeters. Again, another one of these, but you've got these little barite, feathered, feathered barites with fluorite and then a calcite from Pindale. These are two more of, um, on that other, let's go back a couple of pictures to that quarry there. There's another, this area here is called Smalldale. Small, small 
and they came out of that that quarry. It's one one piece of rock, and I've got two photographs of it. This, this ring, we were discussing rings a few, a few months back, weren't we? And uh, probably probably girthite or something like that was formed on it. It might be bitumen. Um, this one is, yeah, yeah, it could be bitumen. This is what they call like they call this um, melaterite or hydrocarbon. This came off. Um, of with its pass, uh, a friend of mine collected this back in the 1960s or 70s, and um, they were up on the hill just picking up bits and pieces, and this stuff was laying about everywhere. So I move over now, further over to the to up to Crouch, which is the other side of Matlock, and this is the the Glory Glorybine Tram Museum. Um, again, this is the the the, the, the Tram Museum is this area in here. And I I walked on this particular day when I did this around this area. I walked around this area, up across into this, but this wasn't there in 1977 when I did this walk. And then back down through here along the tram line, crossed over onto this track and up to this tower. Took some photographs back down and then back round. When I got to a point round about here somewhere, I found an old dump on the on, on the side of the hill. So I went in and looked. I always carried my hammer in them days, so I, I managed to get some specimens out of it. And um, so that's my daughter on this with this tower. And that's the view back down into the, the tram museum, and that's the general view of the countryside around it. Um, again, very, <laughs> very dated these little the clothes, 1970s clothes. But these were these are bits I picked up on that walk round, just, just walking around through the dump, fl all fluorite. They're quite nice, those little specimens. And fluorite again, barite, galena in barite, and again that one. That one might be, uh, this is either cinnabar or paint. I haven't seen the specimen for a while, so I need to check it out again and see, but it was just a bit I picked up on the way around. And then the, the 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 place I was telling you about where I stopped and done some collecting was called I found out was called Pearson's Venture Mine, which was part of the old which for the the, the, the quarry which the, the tram museum is, was now in was once part of this where the mine was. So this is just some bits and pieces of fluorite I picked up um, from that little that little dump. Again, um, fluorite again. So the next bit is a little bit further away. This, this is to the north of Matlock. Now this is Ash, around at the village of Ashover. So you've got two quarries there. You've got Fall Hill Quarry over this side, and you've got the, um, the Milltown Quarry over this side. So I'll start with this one, uh, which is a, this was about 1979 I took this. It was a big, big deep hole with blue water in it. And we had permission to come in this at the time and uh, from the, the, the guys who were working on it. And um, along the edge where you can't quite see it on this picture, which is just on this edge over here, roughly along there, um, a friend of mine collected um, sweetite. And um, there was also millerite came out of a, a cavity along the edge. So this is main, again, mainly fluorite, barite. Um, and th these are just some of the fluorite pieces that I got out of there over the years. Um, You get you get the, um, the this one here has got this double double terminated quartz crystals on it. It might be this one. Calcite, sphalerite. This is a, a sweet type from there that I was given. I was given this by the by the guy who found it. It was tested at the British Museum uh, and that tested as as sweet type. Little tiny bi pyramids, clear crystals of sweet type. So then the other, the other side of the road, so you come up to the there, follow this track round and go in here and as the lane goes up and you can park one, one vehicle in a, a gateway there, walk up this track and into this, this area here. Back in the, in the 1990s, we used to walk right across and collect all through this area, but now it's more or less out of bounds. We, we still collected from uh, around here. And this is where Steve Rust found um, Ashoverite, um, 
and what was the other one he found from there? Ash Overright and Sweet Oak. And we on this well, we've ridden it two or three times recently, and this is this is the rock what's left there now, and we collected out of these these little little pockets of so you can see the size of the, the thing. Um when I when I was there in 1996, I think it was, this was a lot easier to get into and actually get inside this hole and stand in it. This is it making his way through the undergrowth and Richard Bell looking in, into the hole. We did we did a bit of collecting in this one and uh, this was back to 19, when I collected this in um, 1996, I think it was, and that's about um, six inches, six, seven inches across that, it's a, 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 and that's the other side of it. So they're, they're, they're two inch, nearly two inch crystals on this. And this, this is out of the park, I, I got this pocket, I, I, this particular day I went in and got this stuff out. Um, I've been, been working at the at the, the hole for quite a long while, and the, the guy who was our, our secretary, and he still is, he, he wanted to go in the Matlock to the museum. So I, me being the, the driver of the minibus, had to run him down in the town. And when I came back out, this other guy had been in my hole and hacked the best specimens out and said, you don't want these, Martin, you don't collect micromounts. So you only, you only collect micromounts, you don't want big specimens. But I said, I do, please, I'll have them. So these are in my collection, and they are nice, Nice crystals of, of fluorite from that, that, that particular location. Fluorite again, this was this was collected um, probably 2018, I think these ones. Smith's the night. Very nice quartz. Fluorite and the fluorite again. This has got little tiny quartz crystals all over it. Um, also in the area, we, we were just driving along this road. And we, we, we saw this, this track going into this quarry. Didn't see this bit at the time, but we walked in through. So we went and parked up there, walked back down and walked in and come through to this area. There's a big cliff on this, this edge around here. And we, that we found some more, more again, more, more fluoride. This is a butts quarry near Ashover. And again, these rigid ledges up here have got little pockets with fluoride in. Um, it's now used as, as you saw in that earlier picture, as a, um, a mot motocross track. Uh, from that, that, so there we got the, the again these purple edged fluorites and and calcite. Uh, that's that's the calcite specimen. Um, Cavendish Mill, which is up near Great Hucklow. Um, it, it's the, the dumping ground for the, the material from Mint Mill Dam Mine, which was on the same vein as Lady Wash Mine. And they, they've been, and it's still working actually, that they, and you can get permission to go in, but there's not an awful lot to get there at the moment. Um, but again, this was back in the year 2000, we had permission to go in, and this is the dump, dumping ground for the, the, the fluorite rock from Mill, Mill, from Mill, 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 Mill Dam Mine. And this is us filling up the um, the cars with it. So that's quite easy collecting that one. And this is some of the fluorites I've had from there. They're, they're quite. It's mainly mainly fluorite and um, Smith's tonight. Uh, no Smith's tonight and um, little wolfenite crystals. So moving across to the a little bit to the village called Iron, which is a, a play the, the a plague village back in the. It was the 1600s, so they, had, they had the plague going through England at the time, and um, the, the Iron Village was cut off from both sides, and they food was brought into them and left at the, on the outskirts of the village. But this is above it, and you park your vehicles here, walk up this track, and this is the old lady wash mine with the, the engine shaft there and the buildings around it. But this pile here, the pile of rocks that have been left for the uh, for collectors to go in and, and, and play with. So this is us having a look. Um, we, we had no real, no, no real gear with us this day. It just, it just was a, but we, we, we all, we all found a few bits and pieces of fluorite and calcite. But this was quite good. This is the shaft, and there's lots of steam coming out of it because of that. It's right on the vein where they're working at Mill Dam, and all the air is coming up, and uh, it caused a, a rainbow in the in the shaft. Um, Fluorite, 
again, fluorite. It's, it's, fluorite is the, the main mineral in, in Derbyshire. And then a, a few years back, Dick Belson found um, a couple of bits of rock that had wolfenite in it. And this is one of the crystals. You also get sphalerite. And then you get unusual smithsonite forming in there. Um, calcite, quite quite big. The, the calcite from Lady Wash is quite famous, but this was about, that's about a three quarters of an inch crystal, that one, or, or two centimeters. Um, then mark to see. This, this was laying in that track area when we first walked in. I, I think this is probably rotted away now. It's in the garage somewhere, but there's probably a pot of, pot of rust in there somewhere. Magpie mine at Sheldon. This was another one which is, um, uh, again, a very old mine. Uh, uh, this, is the, this is the track into it, and you've got the, the there's a, an old Cornish beam engine there with a modern uh, engine, engine house or modern head frame just there. And the dumps were over this in, in this area and around the back over here. Not an awful lot come off of it, but you got the powder. That was the powder, the powder room, or the, where they, they kept all the, 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 the black powder and dynamite in. And there's another, there's a horse swim um, over here. And that's that's a, a few pictures that they this is that, that this is owned and, and managed by the uh, Peak District Mines. Um, Historical Society, so that, that it's kept in pretty good condition. So there's the old Cornish engine house, and there's the 1920s, 1930s um, iron, iron framed one, and there's there's the horse room. Just a couple of general shots of that. Um, not found much from there because it's a bit of a problem to dig in in the area, so you, you can't make too big a hole. But again, you get the usual things. Calcopyrite with calcite, sphalerite, and smithsonite. Um, these particular, this, this, I'm not too sure what this is. Um, it's probably just some sort of iron, girthite iron mineral on the calcite. So then we move down again to Dally Dale, which is on the, on just off the A6 de, uh, between um, Bakewell and, and Matlock. And, uh, Again, another old. This is this is called again. This is called Watts head frame, and this is again a big Cornish engine house was built on the site. It was the main main pumping or the, the main engine house for pumping the water out of the place. But um, there's dumps all through the woods. And this is us collecting there last year. Um, so there's there's the way the track in, and all this area down here is all. Got dump all, all the way around, and it's all dumped all the way through. And uh, found some quite nice micros, mainly just fluorite, bar and barite, and, and, and calcite. Nothing, nothing spectacular, but it's it's okay. So there's just a few pictures of this. That's an unusual elongated fluorite from the Derbyshire. Um, sphalerite, three three foot glass of sphalerite crystals from there. Sericite, barite with fluorite, and a sericite crystal. Oh, Smithsonite, and I, don't, I think that's probably a barite crystal tucked, to, tucked away in there. There's six Smith, this is all the Smithsonite. Um, again, hemimorphite. This is this is a, that's the size of the. It's about a three three inch specimen that one. So that's a one of the uh, of, of hemimorphite. More farm. We used to always the place we always used to go into. It's a, a, a big quarry. When we first went there, um, it was um, the, the farmer lived down the road and he let us go in, and we were able to drive into the quarry. But this was taken um, when we were there to, to, to 2019. And um, you, now the, the, we, we used to walk in, and Paul we used to park in and drive in here. And we have sailed down a cliff there and we're collecting the big um, calcite crystals. And somewhere in this area, they found, Steve Russ found these big double terminator, they call them axe head calcites. They're uh, quite, quite big, that sort of size crystals. 
that built like an accent. But when I was there in the, in the 70s, all this lot of hair was all like lines of worked, worked through the rock. And within that, we found cavities full of calcite. This was taken, I said, a couple, two, two, two or three years ago now, but it's just completely overgrown. And these are some of the calcites from it. This was out of the, the same pocket was where Steve Russ got his the access from. They, they, this comes out of the, the pocket that I was just there earlier. Um, Galena, there's one, one or two old mining mines in the, they, they, they worked the quarry through the old mines. And these are some um, well, well corroded Galena crystals that I got out of one of the, the levels. You get no, no fluorite in there, nothing, not, nothing very big. I think there's about three or four inch specimens. Um, quite, quite nice, nice mixture. Um, but this is the one we went and this is the one we went into last year. We, 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 we parked up on this bit and walked up this lane, not to here, and to go in this quarry. We'd, we'd been there a couple of years previous. We drove down, we, we drove through, looked, and couldn't get in. And so this time we thought, well, we'll walk up get to there and someone got a gate across the entrance and this area here there's a big double deck of bus and some guy was living in it and this area here was a like a, a picnic area with all all shading and covering over it and apparently this is where in the, the earlier days in the, in the 60s and 70s you could get pyromorphite from but we were trying to get in and as there was no one about, when we couldn't ask to go in, we decided not to. But as we were about to leave, this uh, car drove up, four before, stopped, opened the gates. So we went back and said, can we come in and have a look around? He said, yes, but be careful what you're doing. So we went up into this area and walked along here, up a track to there. And that is just basically, this was the area we were in. But there's the track going up and down. These are land um, panorama shots I've taken just to try to get an overall view. So they're along the bottom of this track is um, all rocks with you get fluorite on it. And then we at the top up here we were collecting in this area here. Um, quite quite nice purple fluorites come out of that one. And that's a couple of them. Um, barite with fluorite, and this is a, a smithsonite. Also, back in in the, um, the, the in the eighties and nineties, as part of the look at these locations, and we went to an area, and this is called Masson Quarry. And uh, back then, that the quarry was back here somewhere, and we used to go in and collect around here. But this is now it is now that's now called Masson Lee's Quarry, and we park there and walk in, and we collect them all through the quarry. But then we also went to a place. Um, just around about here somewhere uh, on this in this area, and we, we found an, another little uh, mine, and we call that um, the, the black ox mine. So this is material calcite, um, pyrite, and quartz and galena out of that big quarry. And again, the fl fluorite from there is quite quite nice crystals, different colours. Ah, now this is this is black ox. So this this is tick, so there's mass and leaves. And so we walked around to this one, and th this was um, the, the top end of um, the Heights of Abraham shell mine, which was down down here somewhere. And they, they worked the way up through the, the rocks, and we were, we were in this area collecting. And all of a sudden, we see these people appear, and they'd come out of a hole in the ground, which they'd come up through the the mine. And we're, we're out. We, we were collecting in these rocks around here. So from there, I got again fluorite, smithsonite, and uh, a very nice little rosa site. Also, in in the 1984, no, 1982, we had the first British Micromount Symposium in Matlock, Bath. And uh, on, the, on the Sunday, we had a field trip out, and I was on the party that went to the Borline Mine at the Viagalia. So the Borline Mine is um, on the side of the hill, um, just, just up here. 
So you have to, we have to park somewhere in this area, walk up this cliff, and go in on the dumps at the top. So you very, very carefully try not to avoid dropping rocks down there. But you got the pig of lead pub just there. So this is how this is the old quarry as it is now, I and mean, this is what it was. Well, so in in there we got these again fluorite, nice nice, nice cubic fluorites, um, barite, and the smith, very nice smithsonite crystals come out of this one. Now back over to Leicestershire, and this is Croft Quarry where we were allowed to go in. You used to walk in down down the slope to the bottom of the quarry, work your way through, collect things as you go. Um, this is a couple of benches you can collect on this. This is Kevin Johnson, my friend, and we were in the cavities. You're getting big uh, specimens come out of um, analcine and um, other. Not, not, not an awful lot, but it's mainly analcine and, and um, so and calcite. So these are two pieces of calcite, and there's the analcine. But these interesting thing are these little uh, little pipes with analcine crystals growing all over them. Um, some of the analcine have got these girthite balls as inclusions end on the surface of them, and again. Iron inclusions in all of them, but the real interesting stuff from there is um, well. Also, there's a um, a a area where the there's the Triassic rock met the um, Carboniferous rock, and on the border you've got this black pyrolusite formed. Very very dirty material, but it was it did it stays crystalline anyway. But this was the real interesting stuff. These these fluorite crystals. When I first got this stuff, I called it prenite for some reason. But, um, I discovered about four or five years ago it was actually fluorite. Other locations, just as odd, odd few locations now kicking around. This is, um, I've not been to this one, but I've, I've given the specimen Wolfenite from Newhurst Quarry Shepshed, again in Leicestershire. Um, Gorthite from Cloud Hill Quarry, breeding on the Leicestershire. And, Calcite with um, inclusions of probably chalcopyrite or pyrite. Um, Judkins Quarry, this is another interesting place. It's literally a one off, not far from Coventry, a place called Nuneaton. And you get the um, spalerite, the calcite, and these, you get the vanadinite grown on the, uh, with the uh, mimetites grown on the, the surfaces of these, these areas. Um, this is um, chalcosite, or uh, yeah, chalcopyrite after chalcosite. And this is the, um, the motramite, little tiny motramite crystals. I think, oh, it's more cool. Um, this is the isolation mine at Snellston um, near Ashbourne. And um, this, this came from a, a, a grab table at the Micromount Society a few years back, Wolf and I on, on Malachite. And that is the last one. That's it. That's very good, man. Yeah, nice. Uh, I'm afraid that Dar Derbyshire in the Midlands oh, is not man. very um, special for, for rare minerals. Oh, well. You, you, you occasionally get, you, you do occasionally get, I think the, the Steve Rust's material that he got from, from um, Mil Milltown Quarry, the Ash Overite and the Sweetite, and I think he got some other stuff there as well. I think it was, was due to some sort of uh, reaction. Um, they, they built fire pits around the limestone. And I think when, they, when, that, when the, the limestone reacted with the, the carbon and that formed these, these new minerals, so basically, they're slag minerals. Yeah, I, I grew up in Birmingham, so on that first map. Um, yeah. But knew nothing about minerals. Um, the only thing no. I ever found was fossils. Uh, I mean, Derby, Derby shares, it's still, you can still collect it. It's, it. Again, it's just fluorite, calcite, nothing nothing very you know, particular. But it's some of, some of the stuff is really nice. 
Simple. <laughs> for us, it was a day's day's trip. We used to get up at about three o'clock in the morning. And I would drive the minibus, go around uh, around Norwich and pick everybody up, drive across to to Derbyshire to start at Exton Hill, um, but then end up going over to Fall Hill Quarry and have a look in there. Um, one more place, and then drive back, get a meal on the way back. I get home about midnight and go and drop the van off. We had a, a very long day. Um, no. <laughs> it seems that uh, there's a, a lot more, a, a lot uh, still possible to collect, isn't it? Um, so I see all these, uh, all these pictures of dumps and uh, mine shafts and uh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, old, old mill close mine. You can still get on there, but the trouble is there. We, the locals don't like you being there. We, we went there last year. We oh. took two cars with us. And parked them at the end of that track I show. And when we came back to the car, someone had thrown eggs. Got taken eggs up uh, and thrown eggs on the at least, at least they didn't shoot you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could have shot, I suppose, yeah. But but then yeah, the, the dumps are still there. You can still find stuff, but yeah, nice yeah, nice, sure. nice micro material. Yeah, why why don't don't we uh, do uh, field trips uh, during the BMS anymore? We're all too old, I think. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all right for you youngsters. <laughs> all right, that talk is um, contributing to my impression that England, uh, Great Britain, has way too much geology in one small space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this quite... It's, but, but we haven't got the, um, the the really rare, rare stuff that you've got in around the world, but we've got a good, good selection of the, the more common stuff. But the fluorites, uh, you know, well, well mm -hmm. class. Yeah, I have, I have some of them yeah. from the area. They are they're stunning, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. If you find I'm those about... uh, those those purple uh, fluorites, yeah. I think I sh should should I would be satisfied. Yeah. 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 Those fluorites. I, I was I'm... wondering how many of them are actually. All, all the ones that were like clear have they were they in the sun were they just faded from light no that, that's the color they are they're very 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 clear they, they, it's very strange the area around um the, the certain areas you get the purple ones the area around Carlton, nearly all purple fluorites and the, that's why you get the purple blue john um but the area around matlock is very uh, the, the there's not much coloration in them, in them at all, but you get lots of inclusions of um, marcasite pyrite. And you couldn't really see them in the photographs, I assume, but the ones like from Milltown Quarry, the special ones I got two or three years ago, um, they, they really have got a lot of inclusions of, of marcasite pyrite inside them. But I mean, I'm, I'm talking, well, 40, 40 years ago, probably. And that was easy to collect around there. And every every quarry would let you in. There's one more place which I haven't I have not put on there. Um, it's called Carlton Hill Quarry. It's just off the A6 between Buxton and Bakewell, and um, it's an old vol volcanic vent. And there they got these quartz crystals growing, and they call them they call them um, Castleton or uh, the the Derbyshire diamonds. They look just like little diamonds with all girthite inclusions in them. But I've not been in that place, so I didn't put anything in on them. I've, I tried to keep the places that I'd been to and the stuff that's in my collection. So, hmm. Martin, you uh, you were talking about a place called Madlock. Is that the, Matlock, uh, the yeah. type of the type, type of locality for Madlockite? That, well, that's what I've named after Matlock. Yeah, yeah. Um, the there's the, the 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 type of locality for it's badge mine or B B A G E badge 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 mine. Up on near, near Worksworth, which is um just a little way up the hill, not not far from the Galia. I always thought that Madlockite was a typical slag uh, mineral. No, no, the the type of locality for it is is I think is the up up at um the the, the bag mine. Okay, well I find these things hey. in Greece, but only in slags. No, no, this 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 is one is uh, the 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 is Mr. Richard Withers or is he still to go on Richard Bell? Show yourself, Richard. Yeah, he's there. He's, he's muted. But... He's muted. And I, think, and blind. I think he's got. I think oh, he's yeah. got a metal right from there. Right? I mean, am I right, Richard? 
yes, and a, and a yeah, I, I, yeah. And they, they aren't, I mean, they, they're not that common in the UK in, in the normal rocks, but uh, these ones were found in this particular location. Well, yeah. I have some, but only from the Greek slags. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's little, little patches of, of stuff. Um, the um, that, that Judkins Quarry one, which I, one of the last ones I show, um, that's the total locality for um, a Waldridgeite, a friend of ours, as named after a friend of ours who died in the 2000s. And um, but Richard has now more or less discovered that it might may not possibly be a, a correct mineral because um, none of it is. This is ah. all fake, even the Clara ones. Yeah. There's there's no there's no natural Waldridgeite crystals that exist. They're all they're all coming from other sources. Okay. But if you've got Waldridgeite, you haven't. <laughs> but, uh, that's, there, yeah, there's, right. there's, there's, a, there's a calcite variety called Alstonite. Al Alstonite? Is that the same region or something? No, no, uh, that's up in Alston. That's what, up in northern England. That's um, on the road that goes across from um, the um, from like Newcastle area across to Carlisle. Okay. There's a whole a whole different area up there. I've not done much up there, but now in Alston, it's little tiny, little tiny spiky white things. Bit, yeah, very yeah. similar yeah. to calcite. Yeah, calcite yeah. variety. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. There's, oh. there's a few possibilities, but the, I said that the collecting is, is very. We've been driving around these last few years trying to find locations, and it's getting very, very hard to find anywhere to collect up there now. Uh, is, you, you, there's, you, um, is there any more questions of Martin? We're, if not, we'll finish up for today and see you all again in a couple of weeks' time. Okay. Thanks, Martin. Okay. That's very good. Thank you, Martin. Martin, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. Okay.